Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with astrophysicist Jeff Swearing. Thank you for joining us. Good to be here, Sandra. We're going to be talking about a topic really that I think is on a lot of people's minds right now, especially in light of the James Webb Telescope, mm -hmm. and that is, are humans significant in a vast cosmos? So get ready to dive in. All right. Um, something that our social media manager let us know is this video that's going around the internet. Um, I'm going to describe it here. It's a person resting at a park, and then they zoom out and out and out, and we see the country, the planet, our solar system, mm -hmm. the Milky Way, and then it goes even farther. We see the Hubble Deep Field image with seemingly countless galaxies. We see the Laniakea, which literally means immeasurable heaven. We see that, and it's Mil the Milky Way is one of 100,000 galaxies. Mm -hmm. um, we see the cosmic web, the cosmic microwave background radiation afterglow of the Big Bang. We see the entire universe, and then the multiverse. That's a lot to take in. Can you mm -hmm. help the average person like me understand and grasp really how large the cosmos is? It's really actually very hard. I would mm -hmm. say as a scientist, I just kind of get used to it because you're talking about, you know, if you're going out to the edge of the observable universe, that's 50 billion light years away. Now, I can use the numbers, I know what the terms mean, so I can talk about it as though I'm comfortable, but there's just no way I can fathom that right. distance because one light second is the distance from the moon to the earth. Well, it takes us eight days to get to the moon and back with our rockets, and so light gets there in one second. So in some sense, no, I can't really. Wow. You can just kind of get used to it by talking about the numbers and knowing what the terms mean, but we live in a enormous universe that is what I love about those videos is, yeah, they show that there's all these galaxies, but there are also certain distances where there's just vast stretches of nothingness. Oh, wow. And we live in a very awesome, impressive, and somewhat depressing if <laughs> all that there is is the physical yeah. universe. So Yeah, and well, that's a point that I think is important to touch on um, about the kind of depressing component to that because it when I thought of that video, and it did go from that person zooming all the way out, mm -hmm. and then it zoomed back mm -hmm. in, and it kind of made me think, gosh, we're so small. I'm sending, you know, tiny little emails, doing my tiny little work, and we're in this vast cosmos, and it can be easy to kind of feel either insignificant or just very grateful, depending on one's perspective. Mm -hmm. But like, how do we know that there's significance to us being here? Well, I think there's two answers to that question. Mm -hmm. One, I think a little more scientifically, is that you know we have this intuitive sense that life is valuable and important, mm -hmm. and you know Earth is just teeming with life. Mm -hmm. And when you look and ask the question, what kind of universe supports life? Well, given the laws of physics, the universe needs to be pretty old. It's got if it's old, it's going to be very vast. Mm -hmm. The distances between stars are going to be great, and all of that is important for putting together the elements like carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and hydrogen that life requires mm -hmm. and making sure that the heavier components, the uranium, the thorium, the iron, the potassium, all these things that are important for life, those are made in stars and so stars have to grow and explode mm -hmm. and populate that all. So there, there's this scientific reason why if the universe were much different, I'd be surprised if there was any life in it, that mm -hmm. this, this kind of universe is what it takes to make life. Mm -hmm. But I also think there's another answer to that question, which really is kind of getting away. If, if all there is is physical, then yeah, we're insignificant. I don't think there is an answer if there's only physical. Interesting. So do you, like, I like the way that you're explaining what is needed in order for life to exist. I kind of think, because I need to simplify it and kind of understand it in terms I, that make a little bit of sense for me, I think of it almost like a farmer and the work that a farmer would do to prepare the soil for mm -hmm. seed and then water and wait and let it grow and then eventually lead to me having a salad for lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that is a lot of work for that goal of me to enjoy a salad. And I, I kind of think maybe that is a way to help people understand, especially when we think about um, 
God, God's hand in creation mm -hmm. and in the universe. Like, would you explain it in those terms of it being it, that it is required to have such a vast universe in order to have life? Given the way God structured things, yeah, this is the sort of stuff that needs to happen. You need 14 billion years for the stars to form. You need a planet that has been around a long time because all of the continents and the nutrients and the, the minerals that we see, they just take a long time to form given the way the laws of physics work. But I, I think there's a part of this where I, I'm not entirely sure why we do, but we think of this entirely in terms of engineering. Uh -huh. <laughs> and if I am trying to produce this outcome and I have to take all of these resources, it seems very inefficient. Mm. You know, there's that movie Contact. You know, if we're yeah. the only life in here, seems like an awful waste right. of space. It just seems inefficient. Mm -hmm. But I think we also need to remember, one, I think there's answers to that. I think from an engineering perspective, we can say, all right, this is why the universe has to be for us to be here. Mm -hmm. But we also have to remember, God's not just an engineer. Mm -hmm. God's also an artist. Mm -hmm. And you don't get upset at the artist for taking years to craft the book so that it comes out with just the right language or enormous amount of resources to hang banners throughout New York like the Gates did back in the early 2000s or, you know, carving a sculpture, the fact that that takes a long time and you end up with this relatively small thing compared to, that's what an artist does. It shows the value of what's there. And I think the confusion is where you seem insignificant is if we place our value on our size or importance in the cosmos mm -hmm. instead of recognizing that our value is because God created us in his image. So, you know, I have a kid, you know, my oldest son, he's valuable because he's my son. Mm -hmm. The fact that I've had four kids after that in no way diminishes his value, even though he becomes a smaller fraction of the family, if you will. He's valuable because he's my son. Mm -hmm. I'm valuable, you're valuable because God created us in his image, regardless of how big the universe is. And he's given this incredible universe that we can go out and explore that points to how valuable we are. Right. Oh, I really love your explanation, especially as a parent thinking of children and thinking that they're, you know, they're all valuable. Um, so if you're talking with a skeptic and they're pointing out that common challenge, well, the cosmos is vast. And not only that, there's a possibly multiple universes and we're only looking at it from what works for life to exist in our galaxy. What are the parameters around a multiverse theory and those other universes? They might have entirely different um, laws mm -hmm. that allow life to exist. And so we, it's in, like it's, it's silly to think that we're alone. How would you engage in that conversation to whether or not there are mm -hmm. life forms elsewhere? How are we significant in that scenario? Well, I think the key question there is not how big is the universe, how vast or whatever, or whether we're one amongst a bunch of multiverses. Mm -hmm. The question is, is God responsible for all this mm -hmm. or is it just kind of a brute reality and there really is no meaning and purpose? If the latter is true, we can do all we want and we're just fooling ourselves at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But when you look at, even in a multiverse, do we see evidence of a beginning? Well, if there's a beginning, Bible talks about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And if the heavens and the earth is just bigger than what I thought, that's just even more spectacular and majestic. Do we see evidence of design in a multiverse? Yeah, we do. What we see is when we look at what life requires, we see the handiwork of a creator to put us here. And if that's true, it doesn't matter how big it is or where we are, we need to not confuse location or size or importance in the physical workings to cloud that the reason why we're important is because God created us. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my response. It's like, why is it the fact that we have a multiverse? Why does that diminish my importance in God's eyes if he created us, whether he created Earth is the only place where there's life or whether he created life throughout the universe. We're still created in his image and we're still valuable to him. Yeah. Well, that is definitely a more hopeful answer, not as bleak as, uh, you know, that we aren't significant. So thank you so much for that. We are just scratching the surface on this topic. So if you want to hear more from Dr. Jeff Zwerink, go to support.reasons.org and search for Who's Afraid of the Multiverse.